Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sunit Chauhan. I, I run product marketing here at Big Switch Networks. Um, we had a great discussion on Big Cloud Fabric. Let's change gears a little bit and talk about an equally important part of the network, and that's the monitoring and troubleshooting um, uh, uh, infrastructure that we have in most of our data centers. In the next couple of slides, what I'm going to do is uh, make two claims, and then hopefully by slide three and four, give you enough validation, enough, enough proof points that those claims are actually you know, uh, convincing, and you are convinced. If not, at that point, I do have a short demo, and I'm going to show you how we use the big, uh, the big tap monitoring fabric uh, here. So let's get started. Uh, the first claim is that just as we look at the hyperscale networking companies or the hyperscale guys and look at their production networks, we can also look at their monitoring infrastructure and see how they are designing their monitoring infrastructure and learn from that and apply it to a much broader audience. Uh, and based on what, what we've done, we've, we've spoken with a lot of the hyperscale guys, and there are a few key themes that emerge. The first two you've seen before. The first one is you want your monitoring infrastructure to be developed using the same bare metal switches. In a similar fashion, you want to create a bare metal fabric that is managed centrally from a centralized controller. So you're effectively programming this fabric to do certain things which are slightly different from you know, running a production network. You're literally taking traffic, interesting traffic from one part of the network and sending it to the other part. So that's, that's the, the core. The other key piece that we've learned from the hyperscale designs is that they are looking at consolidating their tools in certain parts of their networks. So they're not really propagating tools and uh, network packet brokers all across the network. What they're trying to do is consolidate them so it's easier to manage, so it's easier to reuse those tools and bring the interesting traffic to those tools. So those are the hyperscale principles. So that's my claim number one. The second claim is that the current appliances that we have in this particular space, and by appliances I mean you know, your network packet brokers, <laughs> the appliances that you'd get from some of the companies that that are shown here are, are completely antiquated. I mean, they, they look antiquated, um, I independent of everything else. I don't so, see a company, I just see a big red scribble. Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> nothing there at all. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so, so, so the point here is that when I am designing my monitoring network, and I apologize for the voice here, um, you know, having a little bit of a cough, uh, but when I'm designing my monitoring infrastructure, I'm looking to monitor everywhere in my, in my network. The first thing I'm trying to do in a, in, a, in a data center, what that means is I'd like to monitor or have the capability where I can monitor and tap each and every rack. In fact, if I can tap each and every vSwitch, that'd be even better. Uh, in a campus environment, that literally means I'd like to monitor and have the capability to filter traffic from all my locations to my tools. So that's, that's the first uh, requirement as far as monitoring infrastructure goes. The second one is, we have this monitoring infrastructure for a very specific reason, and one of those reasons is troubleshooting. When something goes wrong, I want all the information that I really need to troubleshoot that problem at my fingertips. I do not want to log into 17 different devices, try to you know, packet capture in 13 different places, send it to a tool, and then sort of guess what's happening. So those are the, uh, those are the key requirements as far as monitoring infrastructure is concerned. And the third one is, whatever solution you guys come up with, it has to be cost effective. Because my network is expanding, but my budget is definitely not expanding. So if you look at all those three requirements from a monitoring infrastructure, the claim I have is that the existing appliances and the existing solutions that are out there available to admins and network architects, they fall completely short. So rather than going through a product pitch and you know, comparing feature by feature, what I wanted to do was actually uh, go over a couple of use cases here couple of designs that we recently implemented for our customers and see how are they using these hyperscale principles to monitor their network. So this is a large enterprise. It's not hyperscale. It starts looking like a hyperscale, but one of the requirements that this large enterprise data center had was they'd like to monitor each and every rack in their data center. So this is 120 different racks, and they want to do is monitor, take the span traffic from each of the, the top of rack switch and bring it back to the bottom over here where you have the tool farm. So the notion is I can programmatically at will bring the, the, the relevant traffic that I'm interested in to a pool of tools that are sitting where I can easily manage them and share it across my teams. 
Um, the way they, the way we uh, help them design this, this particular, uh, or come up with this particular architecture is, if you look at all those switches there, that is the big tap monitoring fabric. Those are the bare metal switches running the same switch light that Rob was talking about, now being programmed by a different controller, a, big, a centralized big tap monitoring fabric controller, to do certain things that are slightly different, but the architecture is exactly the same. And at the bottom, you have the, uh, the tool farm. Now, if you were to do something like this using your favorite big box, whether it's an orange color or blue box or whatever color it is, uh, first of all, I don't even know how you do it. Because uh, the, the way getting your tools in a single place and having NPBs spread out over the network would be a fairly difficult uh, task to begin with. You, I, I don't know. The project would probably fail at the cabling stage. Uh, the other alternative for you would be to actually create these mini pods where you have an NPB with a whole bunch of tools and you spread it across your whole network. And that, of course, is cost prohibitive. And even if you're able to satisfy that and you have the budget for all of that, the first time this network fails and you have to troubleshoot, now you have to go and log into each of those devices or somehow program those NPBs to send the traffic to the right tools. Those are the kinds of problems that we are trying to address. And th this is a, a, a really good example where we're bringing the hyperscale monitoring technology to the, rest of the, uh, to the rest of the world. So this is the first example. And please, um, I'm going a little fast simply because we are running short on time, but feel free to ask any questions. Um, the second example, and this is, this is one of Rob's favorite ones. Um, we, we started, we went from, a, you know, I, I said 120 taps. The, over here, we are looking at an LTE network, uh, a Japanese carrier that is going from 2G to 3G to 4G, and they're they are looking at the evolved packet core, and now they're trying to monitor literally their whole data center with a traffic terminated. Now, I, I started my career as a routing protocols developer. I mean, I spent quite a bit of time, you know, spending, uh, you know, visiting Nanog, and after a while, you, you look at all these ISP architecture, you know, visual diagrams, and you kind of get sensitized to it, but when I saw this particular deployment, the, the chart that they had and the acronym soup that they had in terms of you know, the number of protocols that are running in this LTE network, it's just, it's just mind blowing. So if you have to monitor this network where there are all kinds of links, all kinds of encapsulated protocols going from you know, SGW, PGWM, these are like two of the 200 different nodes that they have in this particular data center, you can't even do that with your existing NPB infrastructure. You cannot do that using the existing appliances that you have. The only solution you have is to use bare metal Ethernet switches managed by an SDN controller, bring all the tap and span traffic back to this particular fabric. This fabric is fairly geographically dispersed and control it from a centralized controller. So hopefully with these two examples, I've kind of explained what big tap monitoring fabric is and how people are using it. Now, the one thing I do, <coughs> I hope I'm not uh, leading you to is that this is hyperscale monitoring technology, so it only applies to hyperscale customers. Because the third example that I'm, I'm actually going to show you is a, is, a, is, a, is a really small example, and that's our monitoring infrastructure here at Big Switch headquarters. Now, the same technologies, the same SDN controllers, the same bare metal switches, and the same you know, tool farms, we are using that technology on a daily basis in our infrastructure here. So I'll give you a demo in a second, uh, but before that, just a quick architecture recap. I know I didn't go into the details of how we designed the product, but it's important to talk about some of the terminology. Typically, you have a production network on one side, and you're trying to bring all of the interesting traffic to the tool farm. In the middle is where the, you know, the fabric sits. This is our, your Ethernet switches, and the big tap controller is controlling it. The fabric can be single tier. By single tier, you could actually have just a single switch, and the same 48 port switch can have a few ports where the traffic is coming in, interesting traffic. These are your filter ports. You have your tools connected on a few other ports. So that's a single tier. You could expand it to an LTE kind of environment as well, where you have multiple tiers. You have filter switches. You have delivery switches. A whole, you know, depending upon what kind of a, um, you know, what kind of ECMP and what kind of load balancing you're interested, you could have core switches in the middle. Um, so. With this terminology, I think the two things I'd like you to remember from this particular slide is there are filter ports, so we give roles to the specific ports on an Ethernet switch. Uh, that's where the traffic is going to come in, and then on the other end, there are delivery ports. So in the interest of time, 
If there are any questions, this would be a good time to ask those questions. Are the two products exclusive? So the um, Big Tap fabric and the Cloud fabric, are they exclusive topologies or can you kind of do the same thing with one set of equipment and one controller? It's uh, exclusive right now. Okay. And it actually has to do with, we completely changed the way we program the forwarding chips. There, there's a, on the forwarding chips, there are global settings that have to be one way or the other, depending on the product. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> if, if I go, b I'll go back to the slide where I, I showed the production network. The production network is, the, the, this is the first product that we brought to market. So the production network is your traditional network, your existing switches and routers and pretty much everything that you have in the network. And Big Tap Monitoring Fabric is designed to work in parallel with your production network. Now at some point in the future, there are plans to actually have both of them you know, work together. How it will be implemented is obviously going to be up to Rob. <laughs> Rob and the team here. And some um, of the engineers <laughs> as well. <laughs> yes. So, so this is, uh, now what I've done is, I, this, I've logged into our Big Tap controller here in the office. And what you see is fairly straightforward. A uh, bunch of switches here. These are the, you know, you click on any of these, you'll get information on where it is connected. This tells you fairly straightforward uh, way. For example, these are all the delivery switches. Oh, sorry, these are all the, uh, the, the delivery interfaces. These are the ones where the traffic will go. These are the incoming interfaces, the, the blue ones. And let's take a hypothetical scenario where, you know, one of you, one of our guests here comes along and says, okay, you know, I'm connected to your guest network, but I'm, I'm having a real trouble in terms of um, getting to the internet. So the way the marketing guy here would actually troubleshoot it is fairly straightforward. Um, the first thing I'd do is I'd, I'd go in here where I, one of the things that this big tap uh, monitoring fabric does is it actually keep tracks of all the hosts, all the endpoints, whether they're virtual or physical servers, um, in a database that it is maintaining. Just this particular feature, I mean, I don't know how many data centers or how many ne uh, campus networks can actually tell me what, the, uh, g can actually give me a complete list of all the hosts that are at this current point of time sitting on their network. I mean, th this, this right there is, um, is a fairly cool feature. Now, when I said, you know, over here, let's, let's look at the guest network. 92. So you're doing more than just delivering data to a tool. You're almost you almost have like a built-in tool here that can. We have some, some light data. tool features. I would describe them as. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's. <coughs> yeah. So this is this is a good one. I mean, uh, how do I make it big? Uh, control plus here. There we go. So these are a bunch of folks that are actually connected. If I look here, um, this would be a good one. So I have Tom connected to our network. <laughs> so if Tom, Tom comes along and says, okay, I, I'm having a real trouble with my network, this is where I go in and say, okay, let me figure out what your IP address is, what the MAC address is. And, uh, and going back to the tool question, even before I send this particular stream of traffic from your laptop to the internet to some heavyweight tool, let me just do a quick packet capture and see what's going on. So, uh -oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. So, so the next step would be you come here and you configure. I've already pre-configured uh, in the interest of time. But ba basically, what you go to is you create a policy here, and this is a sample policy. All all we are trying to do is take the the interesting traffic and send it to a particular tool. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, what I'm going to do is start the packet capture immediately and don't forward it to a tool, but just capture it. All it's going to do is capture the packets, create a PCAP file, save it on the controller. I don't want to do it for tens of minutes because it typically uses up a lot of space. Let's just save it. And, and the next thing is, of course, there are rules. So this is where I'd actually add your IP address. Uh, this is pre-configured to actually capture the video streaming. So I know Rob configured this network on our Big Cloud Fabric, the 1024 sorry, 10 to, uh, 254 slash 24 uh, IP address. I've already pre-populated it here. And if I say save, it will actually start saving the streaming, uh, uh, the video stream that is actually going out to the internet and, and put it in a capture. So let's, let's cancel this for a second, but still go back and look at how it will show up. Uh, this is something I did this morning. So this morning when you, when you guys started the streaming video, what I did was I captured and I literally copy it here, it downloads, and I open it up. It's 
just have to double click. Double click. Do you have Wireshark on here? Yeah. Oh, there of course, we go. I have Wireshark on my laptop. <laughs> yes. So this, 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 it's as simple. So getting you from a point where you found or there was a trouble ticket to a point where you're actually looking at the real problem actually takes you seconds. Now in this particular case, I didn't have, even have to go back to Tom and say, can you tell me the host name? Can you tell me your IP address? Can you right click on your system interfaces? Now I'm, I'm making it a fairly you know, uh, 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 simplistic kind of example, but this becomes really complicated when you apply it to a situation where you have an LTE, net LTE network. When you have a 120 rack data center uh, that's sitting somewhere in a colo facility, you're not going walking over there and plugging into a span port and trying to figure out how, how to do it. Would, so with would, that, would I think. Would you do an integration with uh, Cloud Shark appliances or something like that? Do what was the question about Chef or Puppet? Cloud Shark. Cloud Shark. Cloud Shark. There are a bunch of tool vendors, uh, and we're always on the lookout for, for more people who, you know, we don't need integration, but we'd, it'd be nice to have. Yeah, and so we're trying like to track those nice, down. You know, um, nice uh, time. We'll, we'll make sure to check that out. You know, so rather than download PCAP, say, hey, send my Cloud Shark appliance yeah. internally. Well, and to, to be fair, this is a, you know, there are commercial uh, high end packet capture devices. This is not meant to replace them. This is supposed to be, I'm an engineer, I can't figure out what's going on here. I'm going to do a, you know, a, a one gig gig per second trace for a minute and it's going to get stored on the controller temporarily. Well, to your credit, CloudShark isn't a, isn't a capturing company. They're in yeah, oh, analytics. So they just help you just help you just They visualize it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that would be a good yeah. sign. So you can imagine yeah. including pretty straightforward yeah. integration, yeah. I think, to yeah. do. It's a good idea. <coughs> if, if at the end of this whole exercise I was not able to figure out you know, what really happened, this is when I call in the big guns and say, okay, forward it to my extra hop or whatever you know, tool I have. And, and that's how this uh, workflow works. So really quickly, in, uh, in conclusion, the last thing I want to cover, and which is something that I, I'm not able to demo right now, is in our latest release, in the 4.0 release for BigTap, we also added this functionality as far as remote data center monitoring is concerned. I talked about monitoring everywhere, and that includes remote sites. Effectively, what we've done is extended our fabric to remote sites, so all you do is put in an Ethernet switch there, the controller automatically extends your filter interfaces all the way to a remote site, manages the tunnel uh, creation and uh, decapsulation uh, part, and from a single controller, now you're managing your remote sites, and you're not really driving over to you know 70 miles and trying to figure out what's going on. So, so that's, um, in conclusion, uh, you know, the, 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 the latest features that we've um, added. So thank you.